that if but if you're accepting and settling that you are going to be fat no matter what you do mm -hmm. right what incentive is there for them to do something about it well, because there is there is so I'm anchoring there again is, there is you're, you're right there you are because okay. there's 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 a difference between being a bit a bit uh, full or big bone shall we say and a difference between being fatalistic and, and uh, making a pig of yourself every day so the, the the point is you know i do love my food uh, and i'm going to enjoy the fact that i love my food but i'm not going to i'm going to be sensible i'm going to do whatever i can to be healthy but i'm not going to turn my life into a misery because for me to have any hope of looking like a mesomorph means that I have to cut out any kind of sugar from my diet, cut out all kind of fat, that I have to spend three hours in the gym every day. Now, people will tell you, yes, you can achieve anything you want, but boy, your life is going to be miserable. So the pursuit of pleasure, or the pursuit of assumed pleasure at the end of a goal, because remember I've said that goals are the worst thing society has ever invented, actually causes misery. Whereas knowing how to settle and optimizing yourself is what gives us true contentment. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit lost there because uh, I'm, I'm getting quite a few mixed messages here. So the thing is, you, you there's overweight people, let's say, let, let's stick to the overweight or you're dyslexic or whatever. And if you actually want to look better and feel better because actually that's what um, makes you happier, and you're saying actually they're going to be from a very miserable lifestyle if they're going to actually have to uh, if they're in pursuit of that. No, if you're if you're in pursuit of a certain goal, so if if you think you know what I'm not going to accept the fact that I'm uh, tend to be a little bit big boned, mm. there's no reason why I shouldn't look like um, Hugh Jackman. Why shouldn't I look like Hugh Jackman? Well, the fact is Hugh Jackman before every film has has uh, at least one professional coach who travels around the world with him. Um, and for you to have any hope of doing that, you'll have to dedicate your entire life to just doing that and at the cost of other pleasures. And that is not accepting yourself. And if you can't accept yourself, that's a recipe for misery. But, but life is also about sacrifices, and it's also about making choices and what you're prepared to actually give up. So for, ex for example... Um, you said life is about sacrifices. Why should it be? Life is well, about... It, it it, it, it no, it's a, it you're you, because you're making a choice as to what you want to do. I mean, if some people actually want to go and work an 80-hour week because they're happy being alcoholics, um, you know, in, in the... 80-hour um, week workaholics rather workaholics. sorry workaholics so they work actually well they're actually making a sacrifice in terms of actually living a more social lifestyle um when they when you know when they could spend time with their family and in some cases it can often end in divorce and no, things like this well very few but there but it's a so it's still a sacrifice if you actually want to be slim and you've got this fat gene then actually there's a sacrifice to be made i mean i right now i'm going through um i've been doing quite a bit of research on autophagy which is um, intermittent fasting. So right now, over the last week and a half, I've been um, I've only been eating one meal a day, um, with hardly any carbs, uh, moderate protein, and a high level of fat. When I say fat, I mean good fat, things like avocados and things like this. And um, I'm also so, um, but that, that's that's more of a ketogenic diet I've been eating. On a on a on a one day a week basis, um, and that's resulted in a loss of ten pounds. But the thing of autophagy is, when I mean, you go to that autophagy state, um, and I'm still learning this, so you're going to have to bear with me. So my knowledge isn't um, at a hundred percent level yet on that area. But actually, it's almost like this, you know. But because of that result, it actually starts producing new stem cells. Now, I found that after years of actually having my three meals a day and having my breakfast and things like that, actually, I'm really comfortable with having one meal a day. Yes, I get those stages where I go really hungry, and uh, and there'll be occasions that I'll do a 16-hour fast and then I'll have an eight-hour eating window. But actually, I'm happy with that two-hour eating window once a day. I don't have to think about food any other day, any other time. What I'm going to buy, what I'm going to eat, 
uh, because my diet is actually quite structured. The time on when I eat is actually quite structured, and it's really working well for me. It doesn't ma It doesn't mean that I can't go out and enjoy dinner with my friends because I did last night and I enjoyed a drink, and everything. Um, but the thing is, I, d I do it on a limited basis. So I enjoy that part of my life. I enjoy that part of my life. But I've also I'm also getting very comfortable with this one meal a day. So I've adapted my lifestyle, or I'm adapting my lifestyle, to incorporate these new. Um, these new principles, I suppose, or these new behaviours, until they actually become quite habitual, and, un and until I actually become used to it. And are you? Are you? And you said you're comfortable with eating one meal a day. Oh, I am. Yes. You see, that's really interesting. The my my, f I was well, smiling. We designed to eat three meat. Me we weren't designed to eat three meals a day. Mm -hmm. I, I was smiling uh, because I was thinking that I can predict that you'll lose your weight. At some point, you kind of come to me and say, you know, forget that for a for a <laughs> for a, for a game of <laughs> cricket. You know what? I need, I just want to enjoy my food. Um, but you know, but I've developed a few healthy habits. So that was my first prediction. I do, I do enjoy my food. I, I I enjoy. You know, I don't. You know, do I do I like bread? Absolutely. But um, the 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 amount of times I've actually had bread in the last year. It's been quite minimal, and that's without even any diet, um, because of the way it makes me feel. So, in some ways, it, it makes me lose energy, um, which actually then ultimately makes me drained, which ultimately makes me unhappier. So, my whole state of mind is fully impacted by some of the foods that are available out there. Don't forget that, that <coughs> in the three or four years I've had the honour of knowing you, uh, you've always been on a diet, and you've never been happy about it. Um, well, so, I, I think. You haven't, because you because you always say, "Well, oh, I can't have that because I'm on a diet." Um, so, so I, I, I actually probably rephrase it and says, "Actually, I don't want that because I'm on a diet." Mm. I'm on a diet, but I'm also, but, but I'm also, but doing that, I'm constantly always testing to find out what is going to work. Just because I want, I found one solution um, four years ago doesn't mean my. Oh, let me think. In the last four years. In the last four years, it do, it does it doesn't mean that. Oh. My opinion isn't going to change. Having discovered something new, the more knowledge you learn and everything like that. Well, you see, the other interesting thing, which, which is why I, you know, I, I do try and have an open mind with options, is that, uh, ag again, if you'll permit me, we, we have talked about ADHD. And people with ADHD have an impulsivity issue. Um, they tend to be impulsive and do things impulsively. And what I've noticed with my clients is that they often tend to overeat um, because they are too impulsive. And if you give them medication, uh, which obviously uh, you know you find helpful, the f one of the first things that happens is their weight drops because they're more considered about what they eat. And the really, really important thing to understand here, this is not the medication causing weight loss. Because if it is, it's wrong. You're not taking it for the right reason. It's because your brain is calmer and you're less impulsive about your food choices. You're in control. And uh, the thing is, people with ADHD need a boundary environment. So I've had, I've had people doing very well at work in, and in a work that is very boundaried if they have ADHD. And if they think because they're successful they can they go it alone and become an entrepreneur, they fail miserably because they're incapable of produ producing their own boundaries. So the two things I notice here is, one, your medication might be help, help you be less impulsive. Two, you're finding a very restrictive eating regime helpful because of its extreme boundaries. And people with ADHD need boundaries. So there's, there's two things there. One, condition specific for ADHD. And two, whether or not you'll think... You know, I've I've gone through this for several months. I actually want want to go back to being myself, but I think I'll just better be making more sensible choices in the future. But what do you think that is not being? That, that what do you think that is not being oneself when you've actually discovered a different resource to be able to utilize effectively? Because those are tools, and it's not even about resources. It's about actually how resourceful you actually want to be and actually applying those things into you your life. Food? I do enjoy my food. I've got. Um, I don't need the bread. 
I, I'm, 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 I have bl- I have black coffee and I've always enjoyed my flat white. But the thing is, the more I'm drinking black coffee, the more I'm becoming used to it and the more comfortable. Um, I'm, I've been removing. I don't even. I, I've got. I've never really had sugar anyway. But I used to have sweeteners. But even though, uh, um, even in that respect, I've actually cut it, cut it, you know, cut it down dramatically. And the less you actually get used to your sweet tooth, or one, once you start losing the need to actually have sweets and things that, or, or some sweet, um, you tend to find that actually you don't need it anymore because your body, your body adapts to the environment around it. The, the point is that most people enjoy a bit of everything with, and their weight remains normal. You're saying that for you to start dropping your weight, you cut out everything and you get used to it. That's what you're saying. No, not at all. actually, but not, necess- not, not necessarily. All I have to do is I actually have to find substitutes to be able to pre- pre- replace what I have. So I don't eat rice, but I have cauliflower rice, which is grated cauliflower, which I'm quite comfortable with. Um, bread is a bread. Bread in a few months, you won't say that. No, I, I like it. Um, I don't like... Um, I don't, you know, I don't, oh God, you've, 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 you've thrown me there. Um, there's, I don't, I, you know, bread doesn't make me feel good. Well, but what I'm, look, uh, actually I haven't had creme brulee in a long, long time. Now, if I'm going out for a meal with my friends and there's creme brulee on the menu, I actually may or I may not have any. Oh, I've, sto- I've stopped drinking, I, I do drink wine, but that's actually quite low in carbs. High in sugar, very high in sugar. Actually, no, because it's low in carbs. Because the fermentation process of wine actually, when it converts into alcohol, actually it takes the sugar away. Not that you can actually go and have two bottles of wine, but I do like my wine. But the thing is, part that wine isn't fat in it. Um, it's calorific. Well, that's because of the sugar. No, it's calorific because of the alcohol. No, no, it's alcohol weakness from the pure alcohol makes you lose weight. All right, it, 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 it's well from from what I've looked at, it's actually very low in carbs, and carbs is actually. And, and sugar is one of the p- sources of carbs. But the point I'm looking to make is it's a very different way of looking at things the more be- we become educated because the thing is sugar causes insulin spikes. And it's not even about the calorie count sometimes, it's about the insulin spikes of the food that you actually eat. So eating things like an avocado will take hunger away because it has a very low insulin spike as opposed to having something like carbs, which is actually quite high. Now, I'm I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, so I'd probably be more qualified, but um, I know enough information as to what I can and cannot eat or what I should and shouldn't eat to determine that. You see, you raise a very good point, or or rather I think we did it together, which is you get used to things. It means your habit changes, and that potentially is an epigenetic phenomenon. So you might have your your background predisposition, your genes, but whether or not you express certain parts of those genes is epigenetic, and part of that is habit forming. So you can certainly break a habit of wanting to eat certain types of food or certain food habits, as you, as you quite correctly said. You know, you can avoid one food and still enjoy equal enjoyment from a different a different type of food which is healthier, and that's what I call optimizing yourself. You'll never change your body type, but there's no reason to give up completely because, because say an alcoholic, al- 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 alcoholics will, or even food, oh, I've broken my diet, therefore I might as well give up completely. That's a, a classic mistake. And it's, it shows no self-awareness about what you can really achieve. That, that's right, but the thing is, when you when when this woman, this Hannah, whatever her name is, Critchlow, keeps on saying, actually, these are your, th- this is the science of your faith. So this is your faith, so so you know, so accept it. And the thing is, you don't actually have to accept it. Oh, you see, again, choices. Now, the t- choice about what you eat. Humans are not capable of making consistent, rational choices. And this is not my opinion, it's not your opinion, it's scientific fact. Time and again, humans have, in experiments, been shown to make inconsistent choices. Not only that, but if you tell them they make a choice, they made a choice, which they didn't make, and you ask them why they made it, they'll even give you a reason. And in, in memory tests, for instance, and there's, and there's been a lot of work on this, say, in court as, as witnesses, 
the state in fact there's a celebrated case of um i think someone who was run over uh and two people in this in sitting in the same car saw it and immediately afterwards both people in the same car had different memories and they were convinced 